uh, one year ago we did a review of the PSA AK-74, this exact rifle right here. And in it, we found a lot of troubling things that were occurring with our rifle. And when we did our research, we found out that these same problems that we were having, other people were having. And that's unfortunate. Now, for us, the firing pin broke at 1,500. This caused us to take a qu uh, closer look at the trunnion and the bolt. Uh, we noticed that the trunnion was wearing in very oddly, especially compared to Russian samples and Romanian samples that we had, um, and that the bolt had a lot of chattering and a lot of odd stuff going on. Now, on top of that, we also had pop primers that were causing the gun malfunction. Um, overall, the weapon was not at all ready in our mind, and maybe some of them were good, but at least ours and many others were having, maybe not many, but, or others were having issues. Now we went ahead, we published that review and like, here's where we gotta be real guys. Like when I publish a review like this, like a, a manufacturer the size of PSA can just tell me to screw off, right? They have, uh, there, there's nothing obligating them in any way to address the issues. And in fact, for almost all my reviews, um, with a few companies uh, being the exception, I don't want to miss any, but like PSA and LWRC, for example, who um, take a look at the issues, most of them just tend to ignore them. And that's not, I don't mean to throw any company under the bus, and I probably didn't include a lot of the companies that have made changes, but my point is, is that PSA owes me nothing. They they owe the internet nothing. They could continue on making rifles and, and they'd probably be fine. Like their sales probably wouldn't be affected that much. So I was actually really surprised. Well, not surprised. I know PSA, but PSA contacted me and they're like, hey, we watched a review. Obviously, we wish it would have gone better. That being said, we would really like the opportunity to take a look at your rifle to see what went wrong and to correct some of the maybe mistakes that we have in manufacturing or at least to prove or disprove some of your comments that you made. Hey, 100%, if a company wants to fix uh, anything, I'm 100% down for that. So we set the rifle in and PSA did a lot of testing and a lot of some changes were made from it and some of them were found maybe to not be a problem. In any case, today we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna do a final review of this AK-74. Now, before we do that, we wanna do what we always do, full disclosure. Before we do that, a big thank you to our sponsors, Brownells, we have to give them a shout out. They freaking rock, they are our biggest sponsor and you guys should just love them. Just love, <laughs> just love Brownells. And of course, we have to thank Zydax Computers. They make the computers that we are doing our gaming channel on just a little bit and they're awesome, they're good guys. Let's talk about full disclosure. What is my relationship with PSA? Um, did they pay me a bajillion dollars to do review? I wish, no, I'm just kidding. No, there is no exchange of money between me or any manufacturer because it's really important to me that I can be as unbiased as possible. Now that being said, I, of course, did get the rifle for review, and I will be doing further reviews for PSA, so that needs to be said. Now, in addition to the rifle, we were provided 5,000 rounds in order to complete the testing on this. <laughs> and uh, for further full disclosure, um, uh, PSA themselves, in fact, Chad from PSA, great guy, um, ended up putting uh, 25, probably closer to 2,600 rounds on this gun before we ever got it. And by the time we got that, this thing was hella caked in carbon, which was awesome, because then I didn't clean it, because that's how I got it from the factory. And I was actually pretty harsh on this gun. Um, in the fact that I didn't clean it at all, we ran the rounds, and uh, this thing was, I'm, was so dirty and so filthy that it was just chugging along. And it chugged along, it did, it certainly worked. Um, I was as hard on this thing as I wanted to be, and I really wanted to push this thing to its limits. Most of these rounds were shot suppressed, and uh, the rifle was run hard. But in any case, spoiler alert, uh, it ran great. Like, really freaking good. So let's talk about everything that happened in the last review and what PSA found, and uh, we'll give our final review on this bad boy. To start off with, the first big problem, I feel like I'm doing a 249 with the optic swinging off right there. The first big problem that we had with the PSA, I do it every time, with the PSA was of course the trunnion. We found that the trunnion was wearing in very oddly. So when PSA got their rifle, the first thing that they did was they went ahead and took samples of trunnions that had been made, you know, before and right after mine, and they sent it, them in with Romanian to get uh, the metal tested to see where their hardness fell and everything and to be be frank, they were they were they were equatable. They were about the same, which is good. Uh, that's what you want to see is that the metal is of a higher quality to ensure that it's going to work well in your rifle. So there was no problem with hardness. So the question was, what was causing the odd gouging that we were seeing on the trunnion? And what Chad and the engineers at PSA believe is that due to the fact that 
their training didn't have the angle and was 290 degrees hitting each other. One's going to give, of course. And in the case of the training, it gave way and it began to um, create the, that gouge that I was seeing. Now, you don't have that on other AKs or not every AK. Most of the good examples from Russia and stuff that I've seen because you have a chamfer on the side. So to be clear on my gun, there was never an issue with headspace on that uh, very concerning wear and on Chad's gun as well, which had more wear than mine did. So perhaps it wasn't an issue, but in any case, they have decided to add the chamfer there. And what that has done is this now has a beautifully even wear pattern. Um, I'm not trying to simp for a PSA, but uh, for the price for a nine hundred, you know, a thousand dollar rifle, essentially, um, it's wear that I expect on well-made AKs. I have no issues with the wear patterns that I'm seeing. The rails are all looking good. Um, it looks great, quite honestly. So, if 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 that problem is just from the ninety degrees with that chamfer, they have completely fixed it. Now, in addition to that, so when it comes to our bolt right here, um, on our old bolt, we had a lot of chattering, a lot of um, just gouges in it. This bolt looks great. This bolt looks great. Uh, the wear is very even. Um, there, there's nothing that looks concerning at all. This matches up with the wear that I have seen from my Russian built uh, AKs and from my Fuller built AKs and CW Gunworks and Meridian from well built AKs or Rifle Dynamics from all these good companies. The wear patterns are pretty similar and I'm seeing the exact same wear pattern here. And that's pleasantly surprising because like a good domestically produced AK that really doesn't cost too much like PSA. That's, that's, pre that's pretty dang good, actually. So I'm very happy with these things I've seen. Now, in addition to that, this also brings up another point, which is the firing pin channel. So firing pins were breaking at, I would say, an alarming rate on the old 74s. Now, when they investigated this, they found that the firing pin channel was out of spec. This was causing these firing pins to break. Um, after they have been changed and they are now in spec, I haven't heard of any breaking. Now, it can, of course, be noted, I'm sure people throw it out, that clearly this rifle was cherry-picked from PSA. Well, we'll say that the first one, which is this one, wasn't, but that's always a concern, and we try to ameliorate this as much as we can through contacting other people who own these latest-gen weapons. We do this all the time. Often, we buy weapons as well and run similar amounts of rounds, and in all these cases, we haven't found any issues, any of the issues that we had in our old gen 74 we haven't found on our new gen so firing pins seem to be good due to the fact that they fixed that firing pin channel so that is absolutely excellent now with that firing pin issue fixed the pop primer issue no longer seems to be an issue so essentially they've fixed the issues that i had with the psa ak-74 and in addition to that it has to be noted the headspace has been wonderful on this gun through all the rounds that have been fired through it, which have been many. Reliability has been excellent. Um, this is a good to go rifle now. Um, and everything that they've done is really fix it. This is now, in, in my opinion, for especially the price, an excellent rifle. Now, there are still cons to it, and we'll talk about those right now. Um, the first con that I have is that the folding mechanism on the on the 74 is loose. And I'm not even talking about the stock, the Zeneco stock, but the mechanism itself is loose. And many other people have noted this, and we've noted this on other rifles that we've had. So um, I do believe this to be somewhat of an issue. I'm sure it'll be fixed. I'm sure it can be fixed, not too, uh, with not too much difficulty. Now, in addition to that, another maybe issue, maybe non-issue is going to be the gassing. Um, compared to every 74 that I've fired, this is a very um, gently gassed AK-74. And that's good because, of course, the recoil is very manageable. Um, it's very easy to keep this thing on target. It's like a laser beam. This thing just doesn't recoil. Um, but I do have some concerns uh, in, in regards to reliability, just due to the fact that it does feel a little bit under gas. Now, I will admit right off the bat that in all the rounds we fired through it, and again, we didn't clean this thing once, uh, it certainly got started getting bogged down with carbon towards the end. Um, but the thing continued to run. So maybe my concerns are unfounded, but that's kind of the only two cons that I can really think of when it comes to the PSA AK-74. I, I think it's a buy, guys. I've run into the same thing with, with this review that I did with the other one I did for PSA, which is um, there's a lot of anger that swirls around PSA, both from within the industry and from um, people who just love to hate PSA. I think we have to get better. 
about that, about not tearing ourselves apart, because what I see here is a very well-built rifle for a really good price. Um, I uh, Certainly the rifle has some, some issues, but uh, this is good. So try not to look at this and just shit on every product PSA makes, but look from product to product and see when they've made a really good product. And in the case of the 74, um, I think we have a really good rifle right here. Now, we've kind of gone through uh, the stuff specific to the the PSA as far as what they fix. We're going to kind of continue on and talk about the rifle in general now, kind of a updated review to what we've done before, because obviously we have the rifle set up a little bit differently from when we had it set up before. So we'll talk to that. Now to start off, as we always do, which is tip to butt, um, we of course do have a Strela muzzle device. These are very similar to a lot of the muzzle devices currently used by special operations. We wanted to set one up in that way. They're great. They do add a little bit more back pressure to the weapon to increase the, the gassing on it, which is one of the reasons that we did add it as well to ensure that it could power through some of, the, some of that stuff. And it's worked great. Now the standard 74 muzzle brake works wonderfully from PSA as well. Uh, when it comes to our front sight posts, it is very straight, which is important <laughs> you want it straight. Um, and uh, there's no issues there. And that's certainly been a problem with other AK manufacturers. On the barrel, uh, it should be noted that when they changed out um, our trunnion, because they put in the updated trunnion, they swapped out our bolt and barrel. When they swap bolts, they just swap barrels. That's the way PSA runs, just as a quick note there. Now with the barrel, same thing before, guys. I'm getting about two MOA, MOA with good ammunition. Um, that's going to depend on you. But the AK is certainly a accurate platform as long as you have good ammo, which is a little bit harder to get. Now, up from there, I know people are going to ask, but this is a brand new rail from Zenico. Um, we've been evaluating it. This is called their leader kit. Um, obviously, at the very front here, it's dropped down. That way you can mount a Zenico laser and have it be out of the way of your optic. Uh, pretty cool design. Um, Unfortunately, much like, uh, you know, Block 2s or the Block 2 FSPs where the rails extended um, out past the front sight post is kind of a similar setup. You have a lot of weight out front. So this kind of takes away a lot of the classically balanced kind of AK-74 feeling that you have with this leader kit. Uh, it's not my favorite just due to the way how all of the weight is shifted forward, but I understand the capability added from having the light right up front that's less uh, shadow from the barrel and all that kind of stuff. And of course, having the laser up front, less splash with your IR and all that goodness. So there's, of course, uh, a reason for it. It's just, it, for me, it really kind of throws off the AK-74 balance and it's just not going to be my favorite. Now, of course, I understand the reason for it, right? We have less shadow off the barrel with the light this far forward. And we could get this light all the way forward if we really wanted and less IR splash with our IR laser. It is what it is. Zenico, of course, has a different mounting system. They have, uh, they don't, they're going to do what Russia does, right? They're going to do their own thing, which is totally fine. They don't have to, uh, you know, adhere to MLOC or any of our standards that we have. It's a good system. Again, it's just going to be different, which means that you're going to have to have uh, different mounting systems. But they do have um, Picatinny adapters that work well. Uh, no issues with the rail. Now, moving back from there, of course, we do have our B33 top cover mount. Now, this does mount into this front rail right here, which is mounted into the train unit itself, and it is a very sturdy, very uh, stable platform, and it allows your weapon to hold zero, which allows for mounting of more modern optics, such as this Elkan Spectre right here. And before we forget about it, this is the new sling from GBRS Group. Awesome. Love it. It works really well, uh, like other well-made slings. Going down from there, of course, we have our standard AK-74 magazines, uh, Bulgarians in this case. Russians will work like your plums or of course your AK-12 mags work no problem. These do lock in if you haven't messed with an AK-74. It is a little bit odd the first time you click them in. You have to do that little rocking motion, um, but it does work well. One of my favorite things about the PSAs is that they include the enhanced safeties with them. So typically on AKs, you have to reach all the way forward when you have the weapon ready in order to get that safety off. Now with the enhanced safeties, you can simply out with your trigger finger so it works very well one thing that's really hard to explain is how a weapon feels and sounds and compared to the old gen i don't know if it's the addition of the chamfer or what they've done but it just it feels better it, it sounds better it sounds like an ak should so like when i rack it it just sounds like a well-made ak we have our jim fuller ak 105 right here it just it sounds like it should. It just sounds good. It's really hard to explain. But even when you're firing, you can notice a slight difference from the older gen. Maybe that's just in my head, um, but it sounds good and it feels like what an AK-74 should feel like. And again, the recoil on this is just so manageable. 
Um, I've, I've had a lot of fun shooting this weapon over time. Then of course we have the trigger. We've ghosted the trigger on this guy before. Um, it is your standard AK-74 triggers, which are actually pretty nice. You feel them right there. Go ahead and put your finger right over mine. Get that sling out of the way. Get about two millimeter, three, four play. You have your break. And then for our reset, short. About a three pound let off. Nice trigger on this AK. Of course, you could swap out the grips to whatever you want, which brings me to the end, which is of course the stock which has a little bit of wobble in it, more than it really should have. So there are certainly uh, still a few issues I think to be solved. I think those are primarily related to gassing and to the stock itself, but for $1,000 for an AK, I think you're getting a really, really good rifle. And I know I've said that several times, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm impressed with uh, them, the fact that they took um, the constructive criticism that I had and that many others had, again, this wasn't all me, and that they improved upon this design and I think came up with a with a really good rifle for the price. So you really have to give them a little bit of credit um, for doing that because, I mean, of course, they could have just done their own thing. Now, it should be noted, too, when it comes to our cons that, like, uh, of course, you wish that these would have come to the market without any issues, right? Because there's going to be people out there who bought the first gen and don't know that there were any issues with it. And maybe they will, or maybe they won't have the issues down the line because they just don't shoot that much. And that is the unfortunate nature um, of this. And it's kind of the downside to everything is that you wish things would come out just working great. I guess the best thing we can say to that is, you know, it, it's just not super easy to make a weapon. So I get it. Um, the world is what it is, but um, I think they've done a pretty good job here, guys. So this is definitely going to be a buy for me. So if you're looking for an AK that's not going to break the bank, I think the PSA 74 is it, guys. But as with everything, like we've talked about before, if you aren't training with it, it's not going to matter at all. So make sure that you get training, guys. Tons of great guys to get training from. Not going to name them all. Pat McNamara, Hilly Strategic, my dad, et cetera, et cetera. Get out there. Get training. Get better. Appreciate you guys. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, before you say a comment online, I think it's going to be important that you look at yourself in the mirror. Think to yourself, does this comment also apply to you? Just thought. Final note for you guys, if you haven't already, our Patreon is brand new, revamped. Our camera guy is now posting exclusive content. You have some exclusive uh, access to some early products as well. Go check it out. And a big thank you to you guys. Take care out there.